James Graham, first Marquess of Montrose was a Scottish nobleman, poet and soldier, who initially joined the Covenanters in the Wars of the Three Kingdoms, but subsequently supported King Charles I as the English Civil War developed, from 1644 to 1646, and again in 1650. He fought a civil war in Scotland on behalf of the king and is generally referred to in Scotland as simply the Great Montrose. His spectacular victories, which took his opponents by surprise, are remembered in military history for their tactical brilliance, family and education. His maternal grandparents were William Ruthven, 1st Earl of Gowrie, and Dorothea, a daughter of Henry Stuart. First Lord Methven and his second wife Janet Stuart. Her maternal grandparents were John Stuart, second Earl of Athol and Lady Janet Campbell. Janet Campbell was a daughter of Archibald Campbell, second Earl of Argyll and Elizabeth Stuart. Elizabeth was a daughter of John Stuart, first Earl of Lennox and Margaret Montgomery. Margaret was a daughter of Alexander Montgomery, first Lord Montgomery and Margaret Boyd. Graham studied at age 12 at the College of Glasgow under William Forrett who later tutored his sons. At Glasgow, he read Xenophon and Seneca, and Tasso in translation. In the words of biographer John Buchan, his favourite book was a splendid folio of the first edition of History of the World by Walter Raleigh. Graham became 5th Earl of Montrose by his father's death in 1626. He was then educated at St. Salvatore's College at the University of St. Andrews. At the age of 17, he married Magdalene Carnegie, who was the youngest of six daughters of David Carnegie. They were parents of four sons, among them James Graham, second Marquess of Montrose, Covenanter to Royalist. In 1638, after King Charles I had attempted to impose an Episcopalian version of the Book of Common Prayer upon the reluctant Scots, resistance spread throughout the country, eventually culminating in the Bishop's Wars. Montrose joined the Party of Resistance, and was for some time one of its most energetic champions. He had nothing puritanical in his nature, but he shared in the ill feeling aroused by the political authority King Charles had given to the bishops. He signed the National Covenant, and was sent to suppress the opposition which arose around Aberdeen and in the country of the Gordons. Three times Montrose entered Aberdeen, where he succeeded in his object, on the second occasion carrying off the head of the Gordons, the Marquess of Huntley, as a prisoner to Edinburgh. He was a leader of the delegation who subsequently met at Mucknell's Castle to Parley regarding the 1638 confrontation with the Bishop of Aberdeen. With the Earl Mariscal he led the force of 9,000 men across the Causey Mount through the Port Lethen Moss to attack Royalists at the Bridge of Dee. These events played a part in Charles I's decision to grant major concessions to the Covenanters. In July 1639, after the signing of the Treaty of Berwick, Montrose was one of the covenanting leaders who visited Charles. His change of mind, eventually leading to his support for the king, arose from his wish to get rid of the bishops without making Presbyterians masters of the state. His was essentially a layman's view of the situation, taking no account of the real forces of the time. He aimed at an ideal form of society in which the clergy should confine themselves to their spiritual duties, and the king should uphold law and order. In the Scottish Parliament which met in September, Montrose found himself opposed by Archibald Campbell, first Marquess of Argyll, who had gradually assumed leadership of the Presbyterian and National Party, and of the estate of Burgesses. Montrose, on the other hand, wished to bring the king's authority to bear upon Parliament to defeat Argyll, and offered the king the support of a great number of nobles. He failed, because Charles could not even then consent to abandon the bishops. 
and because no Scottish party of any weight could be formed unless Presbyterianism were established as the ecclesiastical power in Scotland. Rather than give way, Charles prepared in 1640 to invade Scotland. Montrose was of necessity driven to play something of a double game. In August 1640 he signed the Bond of Cumbernauld as a protest against the particular and direct practising of a few, in other words, against the ambition of Argyle. But he took his place amongst the defenders of his country and in the same month displayed his gallantry in action at the forcing of the River Tyne at Newburn. On 27 May 1641 he was summoned before the Committee of Estates and charged with intrigues against Argyle, and on the 11th of June he was imprisoned by them in Edinburgh Castle. Charles visited Scotland to give his formal assent to the abolition of episcopacy and upon the king's return to England Montrose shared in the amnesty tacitly accorded to all Charles's partisans. Scotland in the Wars of the Three Kingdoms The king signed a warrant for his marquisate and appointed Montrose Lord Lieutenant of Scotland, both in 1644. A year later in 1645, the king commissioned him Captain General. His military campaigns were fought quickly and used the element of surprise to overcome his opponents even when sometimes dauntingly outnumbered. At one point, Montrose dressed himself as the groom of the Earl of Leven and travelled away from Carlisle, and the eventual capture of his party, in disguise with two followers, four sorry horses, little money and no baggage. Highlanders had never before been known to combine together, but Montrose knew that many of the West Highland clans, who were largely Catholic, detested Argyll and his Campbell clansmen, and none more so than the Macdonalds who with many of the other clans rallied to his summons. The Royalist allied Irish Confederates sent 2,000 disciplined Irish soldiers led by Alastair McCullough across the sea to assist him. The Irish proved to be formidable fighters. In two campaigns, distinguished by rapidity of movement, he met and defeated his opponents in six battles. At Tippermuir and Aberdeen he routed Covenanting levies, at Inverlochy he crushed the Campbells, at Aldern, Alfred and Colsyth his victories were obtained over well-led and disciplined armies. The fiery enthusiasm of the Gordons and other clans often carried the day, but Montrose relied more upon the disciplined infantry from Ireland. His strategy at Inverlochy, and his tactics at Aberdeen, Aldern and Kilsyth furnished models of the military art, but above all his daring and constancy marked him out as one of the greatest soldiers of the war. His career of victory was crowned by the Great Battle of Kilsyth on 15 August 1645. Now Montrose found himself apparently master of Scotland. After Kilsyth, the King's secretary arrived with letters from Charles documenting that Montrose was lieutenant and captain general. He first conferred knighthood on Alastair, then he summoned a parliament to meet at Glasgow on 20 October, in which he no doubt hoped to reconcile loyal obedience to the King with the establishment of a non-political Presbyterian clergy. That parliament never met. Charles had been defeated at the Battle of Naseby on 14 June, and Montrose had to come to his aid if there was to be still a king to proclaim. David Leslie, the best of the Scottish generals, was promptly dispatched against Montrose to anticipate the invasion. On 12 September he came upon Montrose, who had been deserted by his Highlanders and was guarded only by a little group of followers, at Philip Hall. He won an easy victory. Montrose cut his way through to the Highlands, but he failed to organise an army. In September 1646 he embarked for Norway. Montrose was to appear once more on the stage of Scottish history. In June 1649, eager to avenge the death of the king, he was restored by the exiled Charles II to the now nominal Lieutenancy of Scotland. Charles, however, did not scruple soon afterwards to disavow his noblest supporter to become king on terms dictated by Argyll and his adherents. 
In March 1650 Montrose landed in Orkney to take command of a small force which he had sent on before him with George Hay, 3rd Earl of Canuel, crossing to the mainland. He tried in vain to raise the clans, and on 27 April was surprised and routed at the Battle of Carbisdale in Ross Shire. His forces were defeated in battle but he escaped. After wandering for some time he was surrendered by Neil MacLeod of Assent at Ardbreck Castle, to whose protection, in ignorance of MacLeod's political enmity, he had entrusted himself. He was brought a prisoner to Edinburgh, and on 20 May sentenced to death by the Parliament. He was hanged on 21, with Wishart's laudatory biography of him around his neck. He protested to the last that he was in truth a covenanter and a loyal subject. His head was removed and stood on the prick on the highest stone of the old toll booth outside St. Giles Cathedral from 1650 until the beginning of 1661. Shortly after Montrose's death the Scottish Argyll government switched sides to support Charles II's attempt to regain the English throne providing he was willing to impose the solemn league and covenant in England for a trial period at least. After the restoration Montrose was officially rehabilitated in the public memory. On 7 January 1661 Montrose's mangled torso was disinterred from the gallows ground on the borough muir and carried under a velvet canopy to the toll booth, where his head was reverently removed from the spike, before the procession continued on its way to Holyrood Abbey. The diarist John Nicholl wrote the following eyewitness account of the event, a guard of honour of four captains with their companies all of them in tie arms and display a colorous, qua reft here a lang space marching up and down the stritus, went out i reft here to the burrow muir coher his core w e r bureat, and coher sundry nobles and gentry his friend dis and favorites, both or in future w e r high attending, and i, in presence of sundry nobles, earls, lordis, baroness and other as convenient for the time. His grave, grave was raise it, his body and bones taken out and wrapped up in curious clothes and put in a coffin, cahilk, under a canopy of rich velvet, wer carayet from the borough muir to the tune of Edinburgh, the nobles baranus and gentry on or the tune of Edinburgh and many thousand eyes beside, convoy at these corpus all along, the calorous, colours, fleeing, drums toking, beating. Trumpetters sounding, muskets cracking and cannons from the castell roaring, all of tame walking on till tie come to the tolber at the Edinburgh. Frey the Cahilka his heed wears very honourably and with all due respect is taken down and put within the coffin under the canopy with great acclamation and joy, all this time the trumpetters. The drumesh, canons, gunners, the display at colorous giving honor to these deared core. From thence all of tame, both or and fuge. Convoy at these deared core to the Abbey Kirk of Halley Reard House. Coher his left enclose it in Ain Yll Isle, till Ford or order be by His Majesty in Estates of Parliament for the solemn punisher of his burial. Montrose's limbs were brought from the towns to which they had been sent and placed in his coffin as he lay in state at Holyrood. A splendid funeral was held in the Church of Saint. Giles on the 11th of May 1661. The torso of an executed person would have normally been given to friends or family, but Montrose was the subject of an excommunication which was why it was originally buried in unconsecrated ground. In 1650 his niece, Lady Napier, had sent men by night to remove his heart. This relic she placed in a steel case made from his sword and placed the whole in a gold filigree box, which had been presented to her family by a doge of Venice. The heart in its case was retained by the Napier family for several generations until lost amidst the confusion of the French Revolution. Battle History Montrose had successive victories at the Battle of Tippermuir, with the support of Alastair McCullough and his Irish soldiers, the Battle of Aberdeen, the Battle of Inverlochy, the Battle of Aldern, the Battle of Alford, and the Battle of Kilsyth. After several years of continuous victories, 
Montrose was finally defeated at the Battle of Philip Hoare on 13 September 1645 by the Covenanter Army of David, Lord Newark, restoring the power of the Committee of Estates. In 1646 Montrose laid siege to the Castle Shannonry of Ross which was held by the Clan Mackenzie and took it from them after a siege of four days. In March 1650 he captured Dunbeath Castle Castle of the Clan Sinclair, who would later support him at Carbisdale. Montrose was defeated at the Battle of Carbisdale by the Munros, Rosses, Sutherlands and Colonel Alexander Strachan. Line Note References Carrot, James Graham, 5th Earl and 1st Marquess of Montrose Encyclopedia Britannica. Retrieved 23 June 2013. Carrot Buchan 1928. 20. Carrot John Buchan, Montrose, Thomas Nelson and Son Limited, 1928. 35. Carrot ABC Buchan 1928. 21. Carrot John Buchan. 36. Carrot Buchan 1928. 22. Carrot British Civil Wars. James Graham, 1st Marquess of Montrose, 1612-1650, Carrot A.B. Buchan 1928-24, Carrot John Buchan, 44-76, Carrot John Buchan, 75, Carrot C. Michael Hogan, Causey Mount Megalithic Portal, ed. by A. Burnham, 3 November 2007, Carrot Buchan 1928, 139, Carat Buchan 1928, pp. 151 to 152. Carat, it is not hard to understand how in Gaelic legend his, Alastair's, fame is made to outshine Montrose's, in Buchan 1928, 219, also July and August 1645, the Thousand Irish were probably the best infantry at the time in Britain, on p. 235. Carrot George Wishart, Memoirs of the Most Renowned James Graham, Marquis of Montrose, 1819, Constable, 530 pages. Carrot Buchan, John, Montrose, A History, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Houghton Mifflin, The Riverside Press, pp. 246-247, Carrot Grant Solden New Edinburgh, 124, Carrot John Nicholl, A Diary of Public Transactions and Other Occurrences, Chiefly in Scotland, from January, 1650, to June, 1667, Bannatyne Club, 316, Carrot Daniel, William S., History of the Abbey and Palace of Holyrood, Edinburgh, Duncan Anderson, p. 123-124, Carrot Chambers, Robert, Domestic Annals of Scotland, Edinburgh, Chambers, p. 307, Carrot Chambers, Robert, Domestic Annals of Scotland, Edinburgh, Chambers, p. 282-283, Carrot 1644 Battle of Tippermuir Scotclans.com Retrieved 13 February 2014 Carrot The Battle of Tippermuir Montrose-Society.org.uk Retrieved 13 February 2014 Carrot Battle of Inverlochy 1645 Scotwars.com Retrieved 13 February 2014 Carrot The Flight of Argyle from the Battle of Inverlochy, 1645 Ambale.org, retrieved 13 February 2014. Carrot Battle of Aldern, 9 May 1645 BattlefieldTrust.com, retrieved 13 February 2014. Carrot The Battle of Aldern Montrose-Society.org.uk, retrieved 13 February 2014. Carrot, Battle of Alford, the 2nd of July 1645, BattlefieldTrust.com, retrieved the 13th of February 2014. Carrot, Battle of Kilsyth, the 15th of August 1645, BattlefieldTrust.com, retrieved the 13th of February 2014. Carrot Way, Georgian Squire, Romilly, Collins Scottish Clan and Family Encyclopedia, pp. 
148 to 149. Carrot, Battle of Philip Hall, the 13th of September 1645, BattlefieldTrust.com, retrieved the 13th of February 2014. Carrot Brown, James, History of the Highlands and of the Highland Clans, Volume 1, Part 2, page 425. Carrot Kelty, John S. F. S. A. Scott, General History of the Highlands, 1645 to 1649, ElectricScotland.com, retrieved the 13th of February 2014. Carrot Sinclair, Robert, The Sinclairs of Scotland. Page 144. Carrot Carbisdale. Montrose's Last Campaign BCW-Project.org. Retrieved 13 February 2014. Carrot Battle of Carbisdale. 1650scotwars.com. Retrieved 13 February 2014. Bibliography. Buchan, John. Montrose. A History. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Houghton Mifflin. The Riverside Press. Principal authorities for Montrose's career are George Wishart's Res Jester, etc. Published in English as memoirs of the most renowned James Graham, Marquess of Montrose, Patrick Gordon's short abridgment of Britannus de Stemper, and the comprehensive works of Napier. These include Montrose and Covenanters, his memorials of Montrose is abundantly documented, containing Montrose's poetry including the celebrated lyric, My Dear and Only Love. There are several modern works on Montrose, including two biographies by John Buchan and one by Dame Veronica Wedgwood, and Montrose, The King's Champion by Max Hastings. In fiction, A Legend of Montrose by Sir Walter Scott, a two-volume series, The Young Montrose and Montrose, The Captain General by Nigel Tranter. Graham came by Cleish by James L. Dow. Margaret Irwin, The Proud Servant, a biographical novel about Montrose, and The Bride, the story of the ill-fated romance between Montrose and Louise Marie of the Palatinate. John Splendid, by Scottish author Neil Munro, deals with the sack of Inverary by Montrose and his subsequent victory at the Battle of Inverlochy in 1645, which would, by John Buchan, a novel about the minister of a small kirk in Scotland, set during the Civil War. Montrose features as a change for good in the minister's view on the world.